So our third speaker today will be speaking about learning data analysis in OpenEDU. Uh, it will be by Professor Nianlin Shui from uh, the Department of Information Engineering and Computer Science at Feng Chai University, also in Taiwan. And welcome, thank you very much for coming. And again, please save your questions. At the very end, we will have questions for all three of our presenters today. Thank you. Okay, today I will uh, introduce the OpenEDU and the something about is uh, learning data ana analysis. So the talk is uh, a little uh, technical related, but it's not uh, very uh, boring. Okay. Okay, here is my online. I will have a, a very brief introduction to the OpenEDU and then the uh, learning data analysis, uh, including the system, the activity, and uh, some service we provide. And finally, I will uh, introduce the lab system we just uh, uh, launched in this year and give you an example. Okay, our uh, system, OpenEDU, uh, is one of the uh, main MOOC uh, system in Taiwan, okay, uh, which is built uh, in uh, 2014 uh, using, uh, using the open address system uh, when it is in the, uh, in the beta version. Now we up upgrade our system to the uh, version edge. So we grow up with the uh, open edit system. Here is some. Uh, here, here are some information about our, our uh, system. Now we provide uh, about six hundred uh, more uh, courses, and the help of them are uh, uh, supported by our government. And uh, currently. Uh, we have about 100,000 uh, students taking the courses in our platform, and most are free. Only a few of them are charged since 2018. And we have uh, instructor pass and uh, self-paced courses. And since 2017, we provide serious and interna international courses on our platform. Okay. Uh, the openness of our uh, platform is threefold. Uh, first, uh, it, we use the open source to build our system, and uh, we uh, provide uh, open courses to the public, and uh, uh, we uh, provide some open data for research and analysis. Okay. Uh, because now I'm uh, in charge of the maintenance and the development of the, the system, so uh, we have some policy on our system. That's very simple. We just want to keep it stable and up to date along with the uh, development of open ideas. And uh, my second policy is to extend it rather than modify it. Uh, that's because uh, many teachers want want me to modify our system and uh, to maintain their special requirement. But because uh, OpenEdit is a very young system, so uh, if you change the code, it's, it, it will be getting difficult to grow with the OpenEdit. So my policy is to uh, extend it, not to modify. Okay, so here is uh, my extension. 
first is a, a curation system. Second is a dashboard system. It's about the data uh, analytics. And the third is the lab system. Okay. Uh, the first uh, one is the curation system. Uh, in in there, uh, many uh, courses are curated in the uh, in our portal site. So we can see the latest courses, the popular courses, the international courses, and uh, some specialization courses. Of course, you can search uh, the, the courses uh, you are interested in. So when you click on the uh, course, you will enter our course syllabus page. So we can see everything about this course. And uh, uh, you will show some uh, course metadata. And we have also a feedback system. So students taking this course can uh, give some feedback to our uh, teacher and our platform. Uh, behind the curation system, there is a course management system. Because we have to control the quality of the course. So uh, each teacher submits their course to our system. Uh, our course manager will uh, assign um, some uh, expert to review the course. So here you can see uh, what courses are under review, what courses are uh, pass the, the review, and uh, then can curate in our system. Of course, then can uh, maintain the information about the university and the uh, teacher's information. Okay, uh, that's about the open EDU system. Second, I will introduce the data ana analytics uh, in our platform. If you are an open edits uh, user, you may know the uh, inside system is uh, very powerful, provided by open edits. But uh, uh, beyond that, um, our teachers and the researchers want to uh, do more about the data analysis. So we developed the uh, dashboard system. And after data de-identification, we provide some uh, public data for researchers and, uh, uh, and the teachers. And we conduct some activities about uh, head song activity to, so uh, students can uh, write uh, some code to do some machine learning uh, prediction. And we put our uh, data to the Kaggle system, and uh, uh, so many uh, students can uh, do the data science work. Okay. Uh, here is the, uh, the dashboard system. Because we believe everything will leave trace. When the students are using our system, it will uh, leave the log. So we analyze, we, we pass in the log and analyze the, the log and uh, visualize the, the data. So the dashboard system has three view for, man uh, for managers, uh, instructors, and the students. So in the uh, dashboard system, you can see how many register in our platform, the total enrollment, uh, current courses, and the co uh, total courses, and the today's login. And you can also see the daily Log in numbers comparing to last year, so I can know the uh, status. Uh, here is uh, another view about the number of uh, registered year by year. So you can see our lum the, our number is increasing, and uh, uh, by gender, and uh, you can see the profile of the register and age. Uh, here is the uh, bus plot about the number of weeks. Uh, how many, uh, how many weeks a student uh, take this course? So you can uh, see uh, on average it uh, is about six to eight weeks. But uh, some courses the they, they take many weeks to uh, for a course. And then you can see the number of students uh, per, co uh, per course. You can see the number is decreasing. I think it's uh, one of the trend of uh, the MOOC. But the engagement is increasing. 
Here you can see the uh, percentage of watching more than half video. The number is increasing. Okay. And in the right, right part, you can see the percentage of answering more than half questions. Okay. Here is the uh, drop out percentage. So it's about uh, five to um, ten percent uh, to draw out from the course, and the right uh, the right part is the number of the uh, courses uh, from the view of the self pass and the instructor pass. Here is the student ranking. Uh, you can see the how many courses uh, registered by a student. The top one student registered 350 eight courses and then finally got a uh, 49 certificate. So it's a very uh, study hard student. Uh, here is the over overview the table to list all courses by order of uh, Taiwan register, uh, foreign register and uh, uh, engagement degree and the uh, drop out the numbers. So if we can, if we want to see how, uh, which courses uh, students engage more, we can uh, click the engagement and uh, get the top one and go to see the details of the, the course. Here is the uh, more detail about the register. We can see uh, the register from different com uh, countries. Uh, here is the uh, detailed information about the video watch. You can see the we show the uh, watch more more than half the videos students because the students are more active in the, the course. Here is the uh, question answering uh, statistics. And here is the discussion uh, statistics. Okay, uh, here is the, uh, our survey about the certification to our platform. So uh, we, put the, we, we also uh, developed a surveillance system to uh, our platform. Okay, uh, here is the dashboard for students. So when students log into the system, you can see the uh, status of the course he, he takes. And uh, you, can, you can see here, uh, we have a warning information to the student. He need more engagement to this course uh, comparing to uh, other students. Okay, that's about the dashboard system. So dashboard system is the most convenient system for uh, every instructor and uh, for the uh, course manager. You don't you don't have to have any uh, skill because uh, all information are visualized. So that's very easy to see. But sometimes the instructor or our uh, researchers need more data. They want to do uh, some analysis more deeper. So we provide uh, two other way about the, the data. So uh, it's uh, about log data and the table formatted data. The log, log data is uh, most detailed because uh, we, we just uh, de de identify the log data and uh, uh, give the data to the, the instructor. But uh, if you want to process the data, you need some computer science skills. So uh, we provide another uh, table formatted data. You just need the Excel, Excel uh, skill so you can uh, process uh, this kind of data. So the table formatted data is uh, convenient and flexible for instructor and the researchers. Okay, here is the contest activity for uh, students. After after our uh, data pre-processing, we remove uh, personal information 
and uh, invite the students or university to, to join the contest. So we ask them to predict the final grade uh, based on the student's behavior. It means uh, how many times he logged in the system, how many uh, times he watched the video, how many uh, questions would do uh, the, in this course. So we can build a machine learning model and uh, based on the, the data, you can predict the their final uh, grade. So uh, there's a very interesting uh, contest. And uh, uh, oh, we also uh, cooperate with some uh, teachers to do uh, deep analysis about the uh, learning data. For example, here is a example about a predict, a predict if a student will pass or not on their video watched behavior. Okay, here is uh, the process. So in this research, uh, we categorize the video watched pattern into four kinds. The first one is complete watch. The learner watched the video almost completely. And the second is the partial watch. The learner lived before the end of the video. And uh, the third is the forward watch. The student watched the video with forward seek. So he watched and jumped forward. Okay. The, for, the first type is the backward watch. So the uh, student watched the video and the backtrack to uh, the, the, the formal part. Okay, so we can uh, categorize the, the behavior of video watch uh, to the uh, four category and we build a, a prediction model. Uh, we can uh, analyze the first three video watch the be uh, behavior to predict if the student will pass or fail in this course. So uh, that's an interesting uh, uh, research. Here, you, here are some results. Finally, we uh, found the random forest approach is uh, best uh, in this research. So we can see for a single course, uh, moose are moose, the course, the accuracy is up to uh, 83%. For the uh, general course, here we analyze uh, 180 different course. Uh, the accuracy is 71, okay? And if we separate the, the course into uh, instructor or self-paced, the accuracy is different. Uh, the, for the self-paced the courses, the accuracy is up to uh, uh, 91, okay? So let's uh, something about the research on the, uh, the data. So uh, recently we just uh, created a project on Kaggle. If you are uh, research, you, you have to research in the data science, you, you may know this uh, website. Uh, Kaggle is a data, a data science contest platform. So everyone can uh, create a project or you can uh, join a, a, a project to, <coughs> to do your uh, prediction model there. Okay, so we put our OpenEDU learning data to the uh, Keiko website. So uh, if you are interested in the analysis, you can uh, log into the Keiko and uh, search the OpenEDU. You can find this project. Okay. Uh, so that's about the data analysis. The third part is the beyond the open EDU. Recently, we just built another system, uh, lab.openedu. Here is a, a platform that uh, instructor can design some uh, re virtual laboratory and put their HTML5 uh, uh, laboratory to our platform and uh, uh, students can, uh, can learn more about uh, doing the laboratory. Here is the virtual lab example. You can uh, change the 
the weight of the bomb or the angle and to uh, shoot the bomb to the, the target. Okay, so when you are uh, operating in this lab, the system will uh, lock your behavior and finally send uh, the bread back to our open EDU. Okay. Uh, here is another example about the virtual lab. It's about the programming. So when uh, when uh, when operate in this uh, lab, you can see the variable uh, value is changing uh, when the uh, code is executed. Okay. Uh, here is the architecture about the lab and the open EDU. Uh, you can see we do something to connect the lab and the open EDU. So uh, when you, you, you do the lab right uh, correctly, you, the grade will send back to the open EDU system. Okay, finally I will give an example of using the programming lab. Uh, this uh, course is offered by me. Uh, it's a Python course. So in each chapter, I design some lab for students to write their program, to submit, to submit their programs. Okay, uh, we use an open source system called online judge system. Uh, online judge system. Uh, the system can uh, automatically check the call. If your call is not correct, you, you, it will show you have a compiler error, runtime error, or if it, it, it's right, it will be accept. Okay. Uh, such a system is good for uh, MOOC course because uh, students will get the fast feedback, uh, like a, a lightweight TA. And for us, we can do some uh, code analysis to the student's submission. Okay, here is the example uh, about the student's uh, submission. Uh, it's a very simple program to say hello, your name. Okay, if you have uh, the experience about learning a programming language, I think you have uh, read this program. It's very simple, but for this student, he submit, he submit 24 times to the system and finally it pass, okay? So by observing the uh, different version of this program, you can uh, understand what problem uh, the student can understand. For example, the student cannot understand the concept of uh, variable, uh, string uh, con concatenation, string quotation, and the input function. So uh, it's interesting to observe the uh, the submission history. Okay, so we uh, conduct some uh, grade analysis uh, on the student's submission because uh, before students uh, taking the examination, then have to do a self practice and the laboratory. The self practice is a very uh, simple question about uh, in the form of multiple choice. So let's just uh, uh, evaluate the uh, basic concept about the programming. Uh, taking the lab is a more uh, good way to uh, check if the student understand the, the programming. Okay, so we want to analyze the relation between them. So here you can see the correlation between the self practice and the final program. The R squared value is 0 0.54. But if we check the correlation between the lab and the, the examination, you can see the correlation is up to uh, 0 0.7, much higher than that in the uh, cell practice. So I just want to say the lab score is more strongly uh, correlate to final uh, examination. So uh, doing lab is, uh, is very important for learning uh, program. Okay, uh, so we also uh, conduct a, a, a more analysis called the frustration analysis. Uh, our idea is if a 
students submit and fail many times, he will uh, get frustrated. Okay, here is the scenario. Uh, for the first uh, homework, the student uh, submit uh, their code to our system and uh, get a compiler error, runtime error, compiler error, compiler error, runtime error. Wow, you will get the fr frustrated. And the second time, you get another frustrated. So finally, maybe uh, drop out from the, 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 the course. So maybe we can uh, help him when he get uh, frustrated, okay? So we do some analysis about uh, this data. So here you can see uh, the higher uh, grade the student get, the lower frustrated uh, degree he, he is. So the average, the frust frustration degree is 0 0.25. About this value, uh, the average grade is 49. And uh, uh, 30, uh, 34 students draw out from the, 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 the course. Uh, if the frustration degree is below uh, this value, the average grade is 80. And the drop the draw out the red is only in 12. Okay, so we can understand the, the frustration degree is a strong, uh, strongly uh, related to their grade and the draw up. Okay, here is uh, my conclusion. So uh, we provide uh, open EDU system and we provide some uh, system and the service to uh, researchers uh, to some uh, research. So the label of the data analysis is about uh, is a system system basis. Uh, it's a op uh, dashboard system and the uh, table base uh, for uh, instructor very easy and flexible to analyze their data and the load base. Okay, is most detail and we provide a lab system and uh, you can do. Uh, more an analytics on the lab system. Okay, thank you. This is my thank you. Thank you. Okay, and thank you very much for three very excellent presentations. So now the floor is open for questions for uh, any of the three uh, presenters. Could um, anyone with questions come forward? Anyone may, an, may ask questions now? Yes, please go ahead. In my case, data analysis, I get the data from the MOOCs platform. He give a uh, raw data, and I, I do the data analysis by myself using the software, Tableau, and the Power BI, something like this. And uh, another data analysis just directed from the OpenEDU. He can give me a picture, the result picture, and I use the picture to analysis our student uh, what's happened in these courses? You mean the uh, how can I get the prediction model? Or no, you're getting data, but mm -hmm. you cannot control how the data are provided to you. You cannot. You have to trust. Uh, because the, the, the data is uh, from the usage log, 
So I, I think uh, it's uh, trustable. We can trust the data because there's a usage load. It's very uh, low data. Yeah. In my case, I found the open edu give me the data. I check the the URL has some keywords and uh, some big like like the key key point keyboards and the uh, login time and log log out time and I do, I analyze this for the student. Okay. Okay. The floor is open for any questions. My courses is played, played, played on the open edu, so you can see our courses in the open edu. Yeah, but the name card is always simple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I can change the name card. Thank you. Sure. F future collaboration is a wonderful benefit of coming to conferences like this, meet a lot of very interesting people, and learn a lot of new techniques. The floor is open for other questions, please. Can I ask about chatbots, which was very interesting. Uh, could you tell us a little more, how do you utilize those chatbots in, uh, in the class? I, I'm sorry, I'm, and, uh, I, I'm very nervous. I, talk about, I forget to about, talk about you. You scan the, the QR code, you must type MOOCs, and the, the chatbot can respond some, some results to you, and you can put the button and uh, get uh, because and if you use scan the QR code and the, the check box is work and the and you use line yeah you use online and and the uh, what no. Okay, the floor is open for any additional questions. Would anyone like to? Yes, please. Uh, regarding data analysis, do you mean you extract all the raw data from the system and you analyze it again? It means the, the system does not help you to do the analysis. Let's say just now I showed there's a correlation between the lab analysis versus the score. Is it? The system does not help you to do the analysis. You need to extract all the raw data and you analyze it again using the Excel or yeah. any other method. Yes, uh, the, the uh, dashboard just uh, uh, provides uh, a basic analysis, analysis. So if you want to know uh, more detail about your course, you have to uh, process the raw data. Yes, uh, of course. So we provide the raw data to the instructor. Yeah. Is my, is that uh, your question? Yes, uh, just to try to figure out if the the system can help you to do the analysis mm -hmm. because I think it's a quite uh, suffering if you an extract the raw data and you arrange it and you do your own analysis. Uh, our platform can give give the teacher uh, data data visualization results. So the teacher just uh, look the picture. He can realize what happened in his courses, so he, he do not do anything for data analysis. Okay. 
it just get the result. That yes. So I, I research paper just from the open EDU and uh, get the picture and do analysis. Okay, do we have any additional questions? Yes. Because this is MOOC, it's a lot, a lot of them how, how many of them? Uh, so, uh, my, my, my case is very special. In, in my courses, I, I put some many, many in technology in our courses. So I have a course, courses about cloud computing. And uh, 205,000 students reduce my courses and uh, 1,700 students finish these courses and uh, pay the 500 NTU dollars. Uh, it's, it's a fee. So the complete rate... The complete rate about 67%. It, this is my very special case. And the uh, general, uh, my course is complete about 20 person. Uh, about 20 person. Can 500 students register my course and uh, about 200 students finish these courses. This, this question is, is very big to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big because I... Just your, just your yes, yes. Uh, I, in, in, our, in my e-learning courses, I every week uh, put the message to student, and uh, he, he never join our courses. He received a message to, to join back to our, my courses. Every every weeks, yes. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any additional questions? Okay. I want to thank each of the three presenters today. Wonderful job. Very interesting, and I'm sure they'd be happy to talk with you a little more uh, after we finish here. But let me give each of them a present from the TCU.